chapter 14 tackles the relatively new topic in strategic management of green strategy and sustainability. The topic poses a problem for existing theories of strategic management because green strategy is not primarily focused on the profit maximization theories of economic strategy such as the resource-based view. Green strategy is about those activities of the organisation that are directed towards sustaining the Earth's environment and also developing the business opportunities that come from this. Hence, sustainability is the underpinning principle, not profit maximisation. But sustainability itself poses a problem for strategists. What does sustainability really mean? For example, do organisations introduce sustainability policies regardless of the cost? Clearly not. So how far do organisations go with sustainability? Frankly, there are no clear answers at the present time, but this does not mean that green strategy can be ignored. It still remains a vital part of the Earth's future. The issue, therefore, is how to structure sustainability and green strategy issues. This chapter uses the book's prescriptive strategy process model to examine the various topics. Let's briefly explore the main elements. You'll notice that the underpinning principles in this list seek to minimise the use of energy, for example, by effective waste management, and also conserving the Earth's resources. Importantly, it places much emphasis on changing people's attitudes to sustainability. We all need to do more, including companies. We can start by structuring our strategic response using the prescriptive strategy process, and we begin by analysing the green strategy environment. There are three main issues here. First, new government issues and the uh, responsibilities that arise from this. Second, business opportunities that will arise. And third, customer issues, including pressure for change from customers. All this will vary with the product or service under consideration. We then turn to a resource-based analysis. Here, we can use the value chain of each organisation to identify the possible issues. Again, the precise configuration of issues will depend on the company concerned, but the main issues will cover energy efficiency, waste management and, importantly, cooperation with suppliers and others outside the organisation. The overall principle will be the need to balance the benefits of green strategy against the costs of undertaking such policies. There are four principal areas, government regulation, company reputation, changes in company assets and an experimental broader perspective that focuses on emergent strategy processes. More specifically, resource-based analysis will need to focus on three areas the organ of the organisational capabilities of the company, the ability of the company to assimilate and implement sustainability policies through its resources, and the resource assets needed to develop sustainability. With regard to purpose, there are some obvious points for every organisation to consider. Perhaps the most important are the commitment levels of senior managers and the policies that will derive from this, especially from the chief executive. Knowledge, technology and innovation will certainly drive some new areas of both opportunity and company policy. Some commentators claim that sustainability technologies are the new 21st century of business opportunity. But this is probably context dependent. For example, companies making chocolate may have less opportunity than those making solar panels. Strategic options and choice raises a whole series of issues that are beyond the scope of this short video. However, the underpinning principle of strategic intent will be a useful guide.
Finally, implementation of green strategy is a crucial issue. It will begin with the definition of operational targets and the allocation of responsibilities to meet those targets. Importantly, feedback on progress will also be a major issue in implementation.